Hello. It is May 21st, and uh, I think we have officially exceeded our last hard frost date, which is very exciting. Um, honestly, I'm tired of snow. And living in the north, I live in northern Canada, um, it's hard. It's hard. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. So today I have very exciting things happening, and um, it's like 17 degrees, so um, let's get at her. Alright, so we've got some plants out here that are just kind of hardening off, I guess. It's the term. We've got some squash here. It is, excuse me, it's my beer. I've got some spaghetti squash and some butternut squash. There's just a few here. As I mentioned before, I'm kind of limited for space, so yeah, I mean, they're doing okay. They're sending off some buds and some flowers and stuff like that, so kind of excited about these ones are looking a little drab these are supposed to be marigolds and they're already flowering so i'm not really sure what's happening with those we've got some sunflowers a few nasturtium that are looking sad but those are my second round so i don't know i just sowed them as extra um this is supposed to be swiss chard and it is totally leggy and dry and terrible but that's okay because i think i can re-sow those Next up is some beans. I did um, a purple one, a yellow one, and a green. So I'm kind of doing a few things in containers. I've got these um, large uh, food grade buckets that, uh, buckets that I got look like. I think what I'm going to do is um, just drill some holes in them and put some straw and like organic matter in the bottom and then fill the rest with soil. So I'm not using completely all soil for the whole bucket. It just doesn't seem realistic for me for one year of growing stuff. He also bought some tomato uh, plants that had already been started at the, our local greenhouse. And they seem to be looking really good already. And they're in, um, I think they're three liter pot, four liter pot. Yeah, so from our local greenhouse, we got a few flowers and some hanging baskets and these tomatoes, and I think that they're in big enough pots to be sufficient for the full growing season. Um, they're not large beefy tomatoes, they're just, we just got um, a few different varieties of cherry style tomatoes. We got an early girl tomato, and then um, this other one over here is called a bobcat. Never heard of that one before, but kind of excited to try that. So this one is the home slice tomato. Looked pretty good. And we've got a couple of different cherry varieties. The one in the back is a yellow one, and this is a red one. And then we have this bobcat. So they look pretty good. Just as, you know, why not? But I can't, I don't have the ability to start tomatoes. It's too cold where I live. So, and I don't have a greenhouse, and I don't have the space inside, and there's just so many factors happening. So, um, yeah, here's one of our hanging pots, hanging baskets. I'll go on our porch, and uh, yeah, so that's all for veg right now. So, the other thing that I am going to plant this year um, is uh, peas. I'm going to direct sow those outside, though, so I haven't started them inside. Um, and I'm also going to do some potatoes like I did last year. So, um, I bought a few different varieties. I bought a Yukon Gold, which is a white potato. Um, I bought a Norland, which is a red potato. And then I also got, um, these little, like, fingerling style potatoes. I'm not, I don't remember what they're called, but, um our local CSA that we are a part of um, was offering them at the farmer's market today. So I picked up some of those. So with that being said, um, today is again, May 21st. And I think I'm a little bit late to the party for planting potatoes again, but 
better late than never, I guess. I'm gonna get them in the in the containers, but I need to drill hole in, holes in those containers before I can do that. Um, I do have one bucket that I did last year, which was massive, it was like 47 liter tote. So I think I might do that tote with a couple, like two of each of the seed potatoes that I bought. And then I'll have like a variety bucket. And then with the rest of the potatoes, I'm gonna do them in the food grade buckets that I got. So I'll be able to tell which is which of those ones, but I'm very excited about potatoes. I don't know why, but I really like them. <laughs> They're low maintenance and uh, it's like a treasure hunt when you're harvesting. So before, I got a dog underneath my feet. Before I get to planting these, I just wanted to kind of go over a few things that I've learned about potatoes before we plant them. And I believe there's three types of potatoes. So like in Europe, I believe they call them first early, second early, and main crop. But I don't know what they call them in North America. So that's what I, how I know what the difference is because of my European friends that I watch. Um, but they, basically it's the time frame of their growing season. So like when you plant them is typically around the same time, but the harvest time is either early, middle or late, which would be your main crop. So I think that I've gotten like middle varieties and then the fingerling sort of purple ones. Those are more of a later season variety. Which I think is crazy, like, I don't understand that because they're a smaller potato. They're supposed to be a small potato. And they take longer to grow than, you know, your like softball size potato. So, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me, but that's how it is, I guess. So, um, the other thing that I've learned is that with your first earlies and second earlies, you don't necessarily have to hill your potatoes. It's always good to make sure that your potatoes that are growing under the ground don't pop up out of the ground. Um, but with your first and second earlies, you don't necessarily have to do that step. Um, mulching obviously helps and I have tons of hay. So I am going to use hay to mulch my potatoes instead of soil. Without further, further ado or any dog interruptions hopefully I'm gonna try and get at least one of these containers my, my variety container I'm calling it plant it up and um, put that in its home for the spring and summer I guess until we're ready to harvest it okay so I've done it again I <laughs> my battery's about to die on my phone and that's how I do all of my recording so I'm just going to quickly show you. This is the 74 liter, 76 liter tote that I have that I'm going to plant potatoes in. I've got some straw that I'm going to put on the bottom as well as on the top. And then I've got some, I've got a couple of different soils that I'm going to use to plant these potatoes in and I'll uh, give you a show when I'm done. Okay. I'm exhausted. I planted all those potatoes in the buckets. I ended up with, I didn't plant all of them. Some of them were kind of drab. So, um, I only planted the ones that weren't too far stretched, but I wanted to show you guys an example of a seed potato. Okay, this is a seed potato. Um, as you can see, it's sprouted. Um, when you sprout your potatoes, it's actually called chitting, I think, um, or sprouting your potatoes in North America. And as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five sprouts on this. So what I've learned is that <coughs> if you want lots of small potatoes, you can leave all five of these sprouts on your potato. If you want larger potatoes, then you want to tr minimize the amount of sprouts so that it can focus on developing tubers, which is the potato, um, 
in a larger volume rather than a multiple volume. So if I want lots of potatoes, I leave more eyes. If I want larger potatoes, then I would remove some of the sprouts. And you just break them off just like this. So if I want, I'll take that one too. So this would be better for you if you want larger potatoes. I don't really have a preference. I did some of them with more of the sprouts and some of them with like five or six sprouts. So it's really what you are looking for, what you're desiring. And I'm not using, I'm not growing these potatoes for like long-term storage or anything like that. So we're gonna be eating these as soon as they come out of the ground. And uh, yeah, but I figured I would show you what a sprouted potato looks like. Let me show you what I've planted. Okay, so you can see these are the buckets that I was talking about. Um, I've marked them with Y, R for red, and then a W. This is um, these. This is the variety that I got for my CSA. Um, so we've got few buckets as you can see and then this will be our mishmash of um, different seed potatoes that we put in there so it's a multiple of or like a combination of all of the different varieties that we did but so what I did was I mulched them with the straw but the seed potatoes are under here so they are under the soil and then I put some straw on top just to keep that moisture and we did it with all of them. So there's hopefully going to be lots of potatoes. It is cooking hot today. I think it's like 18 degrees. So I'm just hanging out with my garlic back here. Um, figure I'd give you a little update. Um, I did plant those radishes here. Let me show you. Because they are starting to pop up. So... As you can see, we've got little radishes in here that are already starting to pop up, which is very exciting because this was kind of a lost cause. This garlic, it didn't really come up. I mean, there was a couple in there, but yeah, I don't know if they're going to do anything, but make use of this space while we have it. And this variety actually ended up doing not too bad. It's starting to really come up out of the ground, so it's kind of nice. We'll see what happens. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my little video here. <laughs> I think it's time for a walk. <laughs> I know.